look at it ride like this this is just amazing oh, i don't know where this is going oh man welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a yet another ducati ride i'm still at ducati uk they've got their media day and this is the last bike I'm going to ride of the day. Now, of course, this is the Multistrada V4S Rally. So this is a new model for 2023. The Rally, basically, think of it as the BMW GSA. Instead of the 20 litre fuel tank on the standard bike, this has a 30 litre fuel tank now. A few other little minor changes, but basically that's it. It's basically got a bigger fuel tank. So it's a bit like the GSA in the BMW range. So join me for a bit of a ride on this bike. What I want to know is, has the larger tank sacrificed any of the amazing agility of this machine? So that is the main purpose of this video. And as part of this video, we're gonna do a swap and we're gonna swap back to the standard V4S uh, with the 20 litre tank and see if we can notice any difference. So if that sounds of interest, as always, grab yourself a cup of something warm and chopsy, roll the intro. The Multistrada is a bike I absolutely love. This is, this is an amazing machine. My favourite adventure bike, the V4S. For the rally version, we now have a... See you later. Boosh. We now have a 30 litre fuel tank on the rally because, you know, the biggest, let's say, complaint, for want of a better word, with, with the V4S Multistrada was the range. I think I managed about 170 miles out of it until nothing left, you know. But, you know, some would argue that's not enough for an adventure bike. So what Ducati has done, we now have a 30 litre tank. Also to save fuel, the rear it now has the auto shut off on the rear cylinders. So if you're going slowly through a town or whatever, you know, the rear cylinders will shut down saves a bit of petrol also saves a bit bit of heat generation as well but i love the engine in this bike absolutely love the engine in this bike as most of you will know i'm six foot two and 20 stone so you know a big old a big old unit and the riding position on this is very nice actually you're very upright massively wide bars i don't think i've ever ridden the motorcycle with a bar width as, as wide as this really huge the seat isn't that wide i'd like a little bit more width in the seat on this you know it's designed to be thin at the front or narrow at the front you know to allow those vertically challenged folk to get their feet down being six foot two i don't have to worry about such things so personally i prefer a wider seat but you know there is an option for a comfort seat and all that stuff if you wish but, you know, I mean, in this sport mode, it's, it's just eating up the surface. And this is a proper bumpy, gnarly little Northamptonshire back lane. And, uh, yeah, this is, this suspension's absolutely lapping it up. So, I mean, you've got all sorts on this, uh, on this screen here. Adaptive cruise control, of course, you know, which the old bike had as well. Little charging port here, look, for your phone. Because I did have something on the tank before, obviously for the 30 litres they've had to take that away and they've moved it because it was on the tank. I think also with this 30 litre tank, even you know, it's not that big because they've changed the material of the tank. I think it's now uh, an aluminium tank hey! to, uh, to minimise the, uh, the width of it, you know, so you get more internal volume by having a thinner tank. It's going to be one of those rides. <laughs> so how do we turn off the wheelie control? It just tips in and then you, you go on the power and you've got instant grunt right down, right down in the rev range. Yeah, she's not lost nothing. She's not lost, lost nothing. Uh, gravelly bit. 
not lost anything with that additional uh, weight increase. Oh, look at these roads. This is proper hustling. That's a street, fight, street Fighter V4 up in front and then there's a scrambler in front of me <laughs> on the brakes. Brakes are amazing. Stylema calipers, you know, he's just got so much power there. It's, you know, you can push on and have complete confidence but the brakes are going to stop you. Then you get to a bit of town work and it's just, you know, the manners are just beautiful even in sport mode. I don't think there's no need to to take the bike out of sport mode. It's one of those again where you just have it in sport and that's it. You know, if you're going to do, you know, obviously if you want to get a bit more economy out of it, then you change it to touring or urban or whatever. Or if you want to go off road, you put it in enduro, of course, and then you've got less power in the enduro mode. But if you're just going to use it on the streets, riding normally, then uh, yeah, I think you can use that sport mode for absolutely everything. Obviously, with the bigger tank, you know, there is more weight here and I think it does feel a tiny bit heavier than the, the normal V4S. Of course, this one's got spoked wheels as well and spoked wheels are heavier, you know, stronger but heavier. So there's a bit more, a bit more weight in the wheels as well, which I probably, probably could, be, could be noticing. As this is the first ride, I mean, there's it's so much technology on this bike. You know, I can't go through all of the tech on this ride because it is, you know, it's just to get an initial impressions of the machine. I may buy one of these again later, you know, have a couple of weeks with it, go through everything, learn all about it. But, you know, I remember this has got more tech than, <laughs> than the V4S I've borrowed. It seems the suspension's a bit more advanced. You know, levelling suspension now and all that sort of stuff. It's, you know, I don't, there's not another bike out there which has the tech of this machine. I think this is the most tech-enriched machine you can possibly buy. This has the bells and whistles plus some. I mean, normally on adventure bikes, you know, if you're fast A-road stuff, they could start to feel a little bit flighty. You know, again, with this sort of you know, counter-rotating crank, the whole bike is just into the road, you know, it's it's very impressive Ducati. I mean, I've ridden three Ducatis today. What's impressed me the most is the stability of them. The stability of them is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And even on this fast, you know, bumpy, it's still so, so stable. Be a good test, bumpy surfaces. <laughs> oh, I don't know where this is going. Oh, the bark from that engine is addictive. This bike's incredible. How can you push a bike like this? This sort of bike, how can it do this? How can it ride like this? This is just amazing. I don't know what tyres it's got on it. Obviously it's got sports tyres on, not, you know, not super coarsers. Sports touring rubber on it. It's really impressive. Really impressive. Oh man. This is, oh, it's, it's, it's so impressive this bike. So impressive. There's not another adventure bike you could hustle like that. Oh man. I well, know this is the first ride. I can't cover all the tech, but the actual riding dynamics of this bike, when even with the 30 litre fuel tank and half a tank of fuel, so it's got a good 15 litres in here, it is so agile, so stable. You know, it's so much fun to ride fast you know there's not another adventure bike out there i don't think that offers this level 
of hooliganism from an adventure machine which could also chew up miles. And I guess the drawbacks with it, you know, is the fuel consumption. That V4 motor is thirsty. And there's no getting away from that. You know, this is why they've had to put a 30 litre tank in so you can actually sort of get your 200 mile range out of this bike. But in doing that, they haven't, they've lost a little bit, I think, a little bit of agility, 5%, 5% agility, 50% more practicality. I'd say that is a pretty decent trade-off. Let's try the adaptive cruise. Uh, how do we get it on set? Adaptive cruise, it will now sit. Let's increase my maximum speed to... I don't mind that. I'm trying to be sensible. I think the only time you've sort of... Just that very slow speed handling. That's the only time you sort of feel that weight. You know, if you're sort of doing 40 miles an hour plus, you know, it just glides around the corners. It's only that like the slow 20 mile an hour nagery stuff where you notice this is heavier than like the monster or the, the street fighter. Get the speed up and you really don't feel that way at all. God, oh, man, what a bike. Set the cruise, wind up the to 50 and it should lock on. It's got locked on, it's even locked onto a motorcycle. It's going to sit behind him now at the, the, the furthest distance on the look of it. And it will even brake, even you apply the brakes if necessary. No, he's going to, it's going to lose him here, I suspect, because he's going to turn off around the corner. No, it's still kept him, it's still kept him. It's lost him now. So impressive, that adaptive cruise control. I love adaptive cruise control. Obviously, you don't use it on country lanes, it's for the motorway. I'm not an idiot. Ready, go for mark. many miles away from the that's the V4 Street Fighter in front Woo! it's impressive isn't it and he'll be looking in his mirror and thinking bloody yeah there's an adventure bike sat up my dirt box <laughs> not a camera van is it <laughs> oh no oh, I'm going to jail So here she is, the Ducati Multistrada V4 Rally. So this one's got spoke wheels. Now I think you can still choose between cast and spoke. Spoke's obviously stronger. If you want to do a bit more off-road, go for spoke. Stronger, heavier, but stronger for, for doing more gnarly stuff. Obviously all the pannier attachments, so the pannier straight onto it. But you can see like the, it's a big bike. You've still got all of this clever air ducting arrangement here to sort of bring cool air to the rider and the venting here to let the air out the radiator away from the rider to keep the, the temperatures down but you can see you know it's a big it looks very top heavy and it's very wide you know up top with that 30 litre tank but it's, it's surprisingly agile considering how big it looks to look at yeah this is this is serious this is a serious bit of kit so actually looking at the bike the tank size is not actually that different because I think it's got aluminium tank, this is plastic and this has a bigger sort of thickness to the plastic whereas that's metal so there's more internal volume. You can also see on the rally there's got some covers here and I guess the, the tank also comes down under the seat a bit more whereas on the non-rally you can there's no covers you know there's no tank under the bike so and they've been very clever the way they've packed in that extra 10 litres. But how does it ride? That's the important thing. How does it ride? It's amazing what they've done with that 30 litres of fuel. It's a, it feels a tiny bit more agile. But there's not a great deal in it. As I said, I, I estimated 5% sort of more agility, and I, I'd stick with that. Also, the bars feel the same width. I thought the bars were, felt wider on the rally. It's obviously been a while since I've uh, ridden a V4S. It was last year. 
and uh, I have to say it doesn't feel a great deal different it, the tank feels a little bit thinner between your legs maybe here it could be a fraction wider between your legs on the rally version but it's not any you know I thought it's not any wider here I don't know where they've squeezed in that 10 litres of fuel it's incredible it's really amazing you know just by changing the fuel tank material and making a thinner material I think they saved an extra couple of litres just by doing that very clever it's a tiny bit more agile but you know I'm struggling to notice it yeah I can notice it where I'm gripping this gripping the tank but up here it doesn't look any any wider really on the rally so there we go a very quick look at the Multistrada V4 rally and an even quicker look at the the Multistrada V4S so think of the rally version of the Multistrada as being like the GS and the GSA really I think that's really the only the major difference is the, is the bigger fuel tank everything else is, is more or less the same the, the, the new tech on the rally is also on the V4S with the self-leveling suspension and the suspension which drops you know when you stop to let those shorties aboard easier it is a very tall bike you know the seat for me could do have been a bit wider you know it's a little bit narrow um, but you know it's an incredible machine the ultimate hooligans adventure bike but if you want to know a bit more how this compares to the super adventure KTM I'll link to my previous comparison video at the top there but you know this this is a hooligan and and the rally doesn't seem to really sacrifice hardly any of the agility of the standard version really incredible so and that 30 litres of fuel is certainly going to come in very handy there we go guys thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed my bit of Ducati content massive thanks to Ducati UK for doing the media day it's great being able to ride bikes back to back like this throughout the day so that's been fantastic so thanks for the invitation and I hope you've enjoyed this little series of videos so if you want to see some more Ducati videos Ducati comparisons press that subscribe button push that like button and I'll see you on the next video cheers guys <laughs>